So, Snapshot 22W44A is here, and it has new characteristics for version 1.20. The first change of the list is that the bamboo mosaic is now usable for fuel. With two pieces of it, we can cook three items. Now, it seems that with the bookshelf, we will be able to implement the idea that many of us wanted. The chisel bookshelves will be able to interact with hoppers and wrappers. Now, we can come to our enchanted book library, come to the front, and simply take the books we need. And since we have this reserve here on the back, the bookshelves will be able to fill themselves automatically. Of course, we can also have a dropper facing the bookshelves, and with simply some redstone signal, it can be filled up again. Then we can take up some more books. The chisel bookshelf is a child entity. We can put a hopper beneath it, and if we remove the redstone signal, it will proceed to absorb some items. With this characteristic, I imagine we will be able to build up a filter that can take out books from the system. Maybe in a future video we can make an experiment and see how this can be implemented. There are some new changes regarding our inventory in creative mode. So, this is our functional blocks section, and we can see here some blocks that have some extra characteristics and properties. Like bookshelves, signs, tinted glass, shulker boxes, and in this version, chests, barrels, cauldrons, furnaces, and composers were added to this section. We can also see heads, skulls, and infested blocks from where silverfish spawn. We can also see that the box stick has been added. Light blocks, barrier blocks, structure voids, the command blocks, and the jigsaw block. Previously, all of this can only be obtained by commands. Now, if we come to our spawn egg section, we can see that the monster spawner has been added. On previous version, by default, the monster spawner spawned pigs, but this is no longer the case. If we place it, we now need to right-click it with an egg, and now the spawner will spawn that specific mob. And if we press Ctrl and click with our scroll wheel from the mouse, we can copy this monster spawner with the NBT data. The appearance of the camel spawn egg has been changed. Also, four spawn eggs have been added that previously weren't here. These are the Snow Golem, the Iro Golem, the Ender Dragon, and the Weather Boss. Previously, if we wanted Snow Golem and Iron Golem, we had to build them with these blocks, or spawn them from commands. Now we can spawn them from spawn eggs. But in case of the Ender Dragon and the Weather Bus, we need to give them to a player using commands. Mochang has announced that this is the case, so new players don't destroy their world using these dangerous mobs. But if we get away from important places, we can spawn the Weather, and also the Ender Dragon. This guy has a very weird behavior in the overworld. Some important changes came from new game rules, which will allow us to customize our, our worlds, mostly for us players who play on creative. As you know, when snow falls, a small layer of snow starts to build up. But there is a new game rule. If we place slash game rule snow accumulation height, and we choose a number from 0 to 8, we can customize the maximum height to which the snow wheels build up. For example, we set it up to 8, and we see the snow starting to build up layer by layer. So forward, snow starts to build up more and more, until we see full blocks of snow. But on top of this full snow block, no more layers of snow will build up. When a creeper blows up and destroys some blocks, a random quantity of these blocks in item form will be there, but they will not be enough to fill up the hole. 
The game release, Mob Explosion, Drop Decay, we set it up to false. When the creeper blows up, we can see much more items are left behind. If in the overworld we set up a respawn anchor and make it blow up, pretty much the same happens. But with the game rule, block explosion, drop decay, we set it up to false. A lot more items are obtained. Of course, except the ones that were burned by the fire. Contrary to a TNT. A few versions ago, TNT was changed to have a 100% drop rate. But with TNT explosion drop decay set to true. A lot less items are left behind. If we make a 2x2 two two hole and fill up with water two of the contrary corners, the other two will be duplicated. With the game rule water source conversion, we can set it up to false. And as we can see, water is not duplicated. Lava blocks work otherwise. If we place it like this, we can see that by default, lava is not duplicated. With the game rule, we can place lava source conversion to true. We update the block, and as we can see, lava can now duplicate. Now let's go to the end. We can see here our friend the dragon. Now remember that when the end dragon is defeated, everybody on the server can hear that loud noise when it is killed. But with the game rule global sound effects, we can set it up to false. And now only the player that is near the dragon death can hear it. The last changes we will review are regarding the camel. In the previous snapshot, the 22W43A, which I did not cover, a change came to the camel in the way it walks. It now resembles how camels actually walk in real life, with both of the legs in the same side moving at the same time. We have already seen its ability to walk over fences, block and a half in height. But we can also see this configuration using a block and a half slab. I still see it has a slight problem with pathfinding, but in theory it can still get over. Oh well, <laughs> I suppose it got tired. But let's hope this gets fixed. This has been my review of this snapshot. This has been Big Brother 161, and remember, I will be watching.